And I'm going to start off now. The, the gas business meant three things. Bad deals, dodgy deals, and no deals at all. In 1863, the first town gas was produced by Stephen Hutchison in Anderson's Bay. The plant was built to manufacture gas for street lighting, with the Dunedin Town Board to supply the actual lights. After calling for designs and tenders, the board's engineer, John Miller, discussed all submissions and decided to design the lights himself. Pride in his own work moved to him to exhibit the lights for a time in Melbourne. The months of delay this added to delivery meant that the town was late to fulfil its end of the gas supply contract and had to pay Hutchison compensation of £907. Those rooms are going fast. <laughs> in 1876, the city brought out the gas works. Then in 1881, Hutchison opened a competing operation in Cavisham, supplying the local boroughs with gas for domestic and industrial use. Joseph Osmond, the Mayor of South Dunedin, used his position to steamroll the contract with the city supply. Then at a special council meeting, outraged councillors and members of the public banded together to reverse the decision. Sounds like the Queenstown Airport debacle over again. <laughs> the embattled mayor and town clerk refused to cooperate and later reconfirmed the decision, defacing the minutes of the special meeting. <laughs> Crowd disapproval became an uproar, which became a fist fight. Later, later in the police court, a rape power was fined and two councillors reprimanded for assaulting the mayor. <laughs> the massive gas explosion of 1903 may not have been due to misconduct, but it wasn't good luck. <laughs> By 1969, the old coal-based gas works was nearing the end of its useful life. So in August 1971, part of the gas works was converted to produce gas from oil. In June 1973, the council had invested in two more oil plants, each capable of producing a million and a half cubic feet of gas per day. It would have been a great deal, if not for the Arab oil crisis. The price of oil skyrocketed, while at the same time demand for gas, tar and coke all increased. The city decided to hobble on with the old plant as best it could. By the 1980s, the city had no more stomach for the gas business, and morale at the plant was low. A 1984 memo from the city gas engineer states that on duty shift workers were either drunk, asleep, or simply not on the job. By 1987, the whole operation had become so uneconomic that the gas works was closed, and much of the land was sold off, but not before one last bit of dodgy business. In selling the land, the city faced a major ob obstacle. Some gas works buildings rated highly as historic places. And there's a story told by a former gas works employee that a senior shadowy figure approached one of the contractors dismantling the works and said something like, if the bloody governor house on the corner of Hillside and Annie Bay got bowled by accident, there'd be no questions asked and $500 in it. Soon after, in a bizarre and unforeseeable accident, <laughs> which is nobody's fault at all, many metres from any demolition, a contracting machine dropped a heavy object through the roof of the troublesome building, to the complete surprise of all involved. <laughs> the building was beyond repair, promptly demolished, and the land sold. It may just be a rumour, we may be must be misquoting, but when a certain contractor mentioned a certain sum of money to a certain shadowy figure, he was told in no uncertain terms to bugger off and keep his mouth shut. <laughs> the guest work's last deal was done. Thanks everyone, go back and enjoy your evening.